Psalms 36. It just won't wait till Sunday. We just got to look at it. Verse number 1 says, The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies, and for being a good God. Uh, now, Father, help us, Lord, to enjoy and bask in thy goodness. Uh, may we truly be satisfied tonight in thee. Uh, we'll bless you and praise you, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Here the psalmist uh, 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 lays out a few things in this wonderful chapter. Uh, the first thing we notice is the mindset of the wicked. Uh, in verse number one, uh, it says that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Uh, verse two, for he flattereth himself in his own eyes uh, until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Uh, the words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Uh, he hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. Uh, he setteth himself in a way that is not good. Uh, he abhorreth not evil. Uh, my dear friends, I don't have to point out uh, 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 that in this day there are many that fall into that category. Uh, they do not see seek uh, uh, the blessings of God or seek the things of God. Uh, they look at you and I as being weak-minded, uh, uh, having to depend on God. Uh, they look at us as non-essential. Uh, they look at us as deplorable. Uh, they look at us as the off-scour of the world. Uh, 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 iniquity and deceit uh, 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 is in their mouth. Uh, flattery of themselves uh, is in their own eyes. Uh, 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 they boast themselves to be something when they are nothing. Uh, uh, they're mindset uh, is to be against every good thing uh, to devise mischief uh, and evil uh, and look to puff themselves up in their pride uh, uh, to exalt themselves above the things of God uh, and even to promote themselves even above God uh, but blessed be the name of the Lord uh, I'm glad I don't live by the mindset of the wicked uh, but I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God uh, you can call me anything you want to. Uh, you can think about how weak uh, uh, minded I may be. Uh, hey, I'm just so weak. Uh, I learned that God's right. Uh, I'll stick with God. Uh, I'll follow after God. Uh, I'll trust in God. Uh, and I'll enjoy the journey while I'm doing it. Huh? We see the mindset of the wicked. Uh, we also see in these uh, uh, verses uh, uh, the wonderful mercy of the Lord. Uh, look what it says in verse number 5. Uh, Thy mercy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are great deep. I'm talking about our God. He's a merciful God. He's a faithful God. He's a righteous God. He's a great God. Hey, he's a God of judgment. He's a God of justice, but he's also a God of mercy and a God of love. It says in verse 7, how 
Oh, how excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. I'm glad it don't matter how hot it gets. It don't matter how rough it gets. I'm glad there's a place that's reserved for the child of God up underneath the wings of God. Hey, where uh, uh, the devil can't find you uh, and trouble seems to the subside. Uh, there's just that wonderful place. Uh, uh, Jesus said there is a place by me. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, for a place we can go to for refuge. Uh, verse number eight says, uh, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house uh, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. Uh, hey, I'm thankful for the mercy of God, aren't you? I'm glad he don't give us what we deserve. He gives us what we need. And then we see the manifold blessings for the saved. Look at verse 8. Talks about that we're satisfied with the fatness of his house. We shall make them drink of the river thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. You say, why did Jesus have to come to this world? He came full of grace and truth. But he was the light of God. Because he is the light. And had he not come, we'd have never got to see the light. You see, in his light, we found the light. In his truth, we were exposed to truth. And in his grace, we became recipients of grace. We see the manifold blessings of God. It said there, my dear friends, uh, that we can be abundantly satisfied. And it says that uh, we can drink of the river of his pleasures, uh, for with him is the fountain of life. I'm glad when I got born again, I got a fountain bubbling up within me. Huh? I got a drink of something not of this world. Uh, and it has satisfied me for 47 years. And every time my soul gets a little dry, every time I think this is it, all of a sudden there'll be a little bubbling. And before long there's a geyser. And God begins to wet my soul again and wet my appetite for him. What a blessing to have all the manifold blessings for the saved. Well, I'm interested in verse number 8. I'm interested. This is that verse I said it was good. And I looked at it and it was good. And then it became scud. Uh, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. I, I just, I had to read that several times. I haven't underscored it. My Bible, very thick. Mm, the fatness of thy house. Now, he didn't say that those sitting in the house were fat, but I'm working on it. But he said that we would be abundantly satisfied. Did he not say that I come to give you life and life more abundantly? Didn't he promise us an abundant life? That's what he said in John chapter 10. Well, here in the 36th Psalm, he says that we should be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Yes, sir. Mm, I got to thinking about that. About the fatness of God's house. Now I, I, I know that a lot of your health conscience and some of you still got a weakness for red meat. I'm not health conscious. I eat all of it I can get. Huh? I believe God gave all them cows for us to enjoy steak Amen. and hamburger Amen. and anything else we get from them. Yeah. Huh? But some of you are health conscious and you'll take a wonderful steak. Now used to I was a strip steak man. I love a good New York strip. I love a strip. Now Miss Nett's a filet mignon lady. Hmm? She don't like steak a whole lot but when she does, she likes them fillets. Now, Miss Sydney, that's all she'll eat is a bacon wrap fillet. That's her deal right there. Uh, I love strip steaks. 
But the last few years, Brother Bob, I've gotten into ribeyes. Mm -mm. And see, a ribeye steak has a little more fat than a strip steak. Now, I don't know a whole lot. I'm not a butcher, but I do know the flavor comes through the fat. Now, some of y'all being health conscious like you, Mr. Ruby, huh, <laughs> Mr. 12-pack, huh, huh, you probably cut the fat away. Hopefully not. I ain't even talking to you, huh? <laughs> but when you trim the fat away, you're missing the flavor. Now, I don't want to gross you out, but if you've ever been around Bella, where she's at, she'll eat the fat and leave the steak. I mean, she'll chew on that thing for hours trying to get it all munched down. But she eat that fat because Bella's learned that's where the flavor is. Can I say, uh, the Lord says, uh, of all the things to partake of in life, uh, he said, come to my house uh, and taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, and in his house, uh, you can be abundantly satisfied with the fatness. Uh, uh, there is a flavor. Uh, there is a seasoning. Uh, there is something you can only get at his house uh, that you can't be satisfied anywhere else. Uh, that's why the wicked miss out. Uh, that's why they think we're non-essential. Uh, if they just taste of the Lord uh, and see that he's good uh, and then get involved in his house uh, and they'll be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of God's house. Uh, now I want to preach for just a few minutes on what God gave me back there in the office about the fatness of God's house. Now I'm saying this you can run, run this rabbit with two different ways. You can talk about the local church or you can talk about his house in glory. Either way it's good. It's good. But uh, since we're not in glory yet, we might just well enjoy his house. Are you listening? Uh, hey, uh, I'm going to glory, but I get to come to his house. Uh, and I've learned, uh, being saved nearly 47 years, uh, there's things here I can't get anywhere else. Uh, and I am abundantly satisfied uh, with God's house. Uh, and the fatness thereof. Uh, can I say, uh, in, the, in, in the fatness of God's house, uh, can I say, first of all, you'll find saturation. You'll find an abundance. When God puts out a feast, you don't have to go hunting for the cornbread. Are you listening? Uh, you don't have to hunt for the beans and taters. Uh, when God spreads a feast, uh, uh, there's an abundance. Uh, hey, he's not slack concerning his promises. Uh, and he's not slack concerning his blessings. Uh, hey, that widow woman, uh, every time she went back to the meal barrel, uh, she emptied it out. Uh, but she kept going back. Uh, and she found God is sufficient. Uh, and I found every time I come to the house of God, uh, I don't think God can get any sweet. Leader, uh, but I just come on back uh, and I find there's still a table spread uh, and uh, there is a saturation of his blessings. Uh, uh, sometimes it's in a song. Uh, sometimes it's in a testimony. Uh, sometimes it's in a promise. Uh, sometimes it's in a message. Uh, sometimes it's in the right hand of fellowship. Uh, sometimes it's on the altar. Uh, sometimes it's somebody else in the altar. Uh, all I know is uh, is it keeps getting gooder and gooder in the house of God. Uh, he saturates his house for whatever you need. See, you might have come in low and you needed lifted up. You might have come in with your wings spread and you just needed a wind to cause you to soar. You might have come in with your bib on and your fork and your knife in your hands ready to eat. Uh, but I promise you one thing. Uh, if you came tonight uh, seeking something from God, uh, hey, the Bible says, seek and you shall find. Uh, and God knows how to spread a feast so good uh, that it uh, fills all of our needs uh, and it satisfies all our longings. Uh, you know I say? In the fatness of God's house, there's saturation. There's an abundance. Mm, I know there are places this world don't have anything. And I know there are other places that's got little. And there are some places that are opulent 
and they've got a lot. But Jesus has an abundance of whatever you need. Can I say this secondly? In the fatness of God's house, there's succulents. There's something about the taste of food. I'm glad food don't taste like paste. Uh, and I'm glad there's succulent. There's just some things that taste good. Huh? There's just some things that you want to beat your brains out with your tongue to get another taste of it. Are you listening? I mean, there's just some things that are good. I mean, there's a, I mean, your garbage can and everything tastes good to you, but there are some things that are extra good. You know what I'm saying? Huh, there are just some things she makes them. Somebody else could make it, but not like she makes it. Huh? And you can't wait. Just smelling it does something for you. But when you get to sit down and partake of it, huh, it does something for you. Can I say, uh, uh, when the Lord prepares something and He does it just for you, uh, it's so succulent, nothing else will satisfy you. Uh, uh, nobody else can prepare it like He prepares it. Huh? There are just some things that just taste good. Uh, hey, uh, uh, some of you might be a fruit eater and the fruit does something for you. Uh, some of you might be a vegetarian and vegetables uh, that does something for you. Uh, some of you might be like me. I'm a mutt. Give me all of it. Uh, if it's anything but Chinese, hallelujah, I eat it. Uh, hey, uh, there are just some things though uh, that is extra good. Uh, and I want to tell you something when God gets to working in a stirring uh, and fixing something in his house uh, and you come uh, and you eat of the fatness of it. Uh, the flavor just satisfies you. It just tastes better. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, yes, Miss Janet, you can watch it on live stream, uh, but there's nothing like coming and sitting at the table uh, and just tasting what God's got for you. Uh, hey, it's succulent. Uh, you want all you can get. Uh, oh, thank God for the fatness of his house. He didn't say the fatness of the internet. He said, the fatness of his house. Now, I'm glad we have avenues. There are some who can't come. And there was a time we couldn't be here. And I'm glad we had avenues where we could still get something. But it's not like being here. Uh, I can tell you all about them ribs up there at Montgomery Inn. But until you go and they put that plastic bib on you and they bring out a plate and put it in front of you and you begin to eat it to, You'll say, oh, that's good, huh? I don't know how many preachers I've had come up here. And I say, do you like ribs? And they'll say, yeah. I said, well, you've never had ribs. I've had them from North Carolina. I said, well, we invented barbecue in North Carolina. I said, you never had ribs, huh? And they argue and fuss with me. We go up there and they bring out a plate. I'm thinking about Brother Jeff Ledbetter. I hadn't even got my, my fork and my knife set and my napkin in my lap. Look over, he was about done eating them. Huh? He looked up with me, got barbecue sauce from ear to ear. Huh? And he looked up at me and said, Brother Doug, uh, you's right. Uh, I've never had ribs before. Huh? Hey, there's just some things that God does. Uh, hey, nobody else can do it like he does it. Uh, and there's just something about it so succulent. You can't wait to get some more. Now listen. I love Red Lobster. I love Montgomery Inn. I can go down the list. Anybody hungry? I'll work on you tonight. <laughs> but I can't eat Montgomery Inn every day. I love it. But I can't eat it every day. And God bless you. A lot of you for Christmas will get me Montgomery Inn gift cards by February. I'm tired of eating Montgomery Inn. I'm just being honest. Can't eat it every day. Aren't you glad God knows what we need? Aren't you glad it's never the same when we come to the house of God? Aren't you, don't, I feel sorry for these churches where they got to put the, uh, a week ahead of time what they're going to preach on out there on the marquee and they come in uh, and you, they're going to sing a special. Uh, uh, they're going to have a congregation sing a special. Somebody uh, uh, pray over an offering, take that up. Uh, preacher's going to get up. He's going to preach his little sermonette. Uh, going to have uh, uh, five points and have a poem. Uh, going to give an invitation. Nobody's going to come because the Spirit of God ain't there. Uh, 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 they're going to close it down after two verses. Uh, they're going to be out by noon at Cracker Barrel by 12.15 
pain and think they had church. Uh, hey, I want to tell you something. Uh, I'm glad God, uh, uh, before the foundation of the world, uh, already knew his son was going to die for our sins. Uh, and I'm glad before we was ever born, Jesus saw us in our depravity uh, and was willing to die for our sins. Uh, and I'm glad he came to where we was uh, uh, the night we was lost. I'm glad there wasn't a ritual going on in the church house tonight. I was lost. Uh, I'm glad, hey, uh, uh, God came down there uh, and God got me uh, and he convicted me uh, and he drew me uh, and that night when I called on him he saved me uh, and I'm glad he put a log in my heart uh, uh, to come out to his house uh, and get a feast uh, uh, sometimes uh, it might be brother James singing uh, sometimes it might be a little kid uh, testifying uh, somebody might be else, somebody else singing uh, somebody give a prayer request uh, somebody open in prayer uh, but I'm glad God knows the right ingredients uh, for what we need. Uh, and I'm glad, hallelujah, it's succulent to the taste uh, when God prepares something for us. Uh, he knows we can't always eat the same thing. That's why I've been fighting ever since God's been a blessing not to go through a routine. Uh, why? Because the Holy Ghost isn't in routine. So, well, 1 Corinthians 14, we've got to do everything in decent order. Amen. But you don't have to do it in a ritual. If I was into rituals, I'd be a Catholic. I'm into being spirit-led so I can get spirit-filled. So I can go out there and empty the, myself in this world of the Spirit of God so others can come and see Jesus I lifted up. Oh, I thought about this. This ain't too bad for off the cuff out of the office. I'm enjoying myself. Told you it's good. Uh, can I say in the fatness of God's house, there's serenity. We are abundantly satisfied when we come out from the turmoil and the hatred of this world and the wickedness and the filth and the vileness of this world. And we can just come into the house of God and sense the peace of God. There's just something serene about being in God's house. There's just something about being with God's people. There's just something about getting the release from being away from the mess and coming into where everybody is in tune with what is reality, and that is Jesus is Lord. Huh? We can be abundantly satisfied in that. And I say this, we can get abundantly satisfied in the fatness of God's house when you look at the scope of God's fatness. You see, you come in here, you can get perspective, you can get scope. You can develop aspirations. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Your faith is increased by what you taste of in the house of God. It gives you scope to understand what is really awry in this world. And you have hope and faith to overcome anything the world throw at you. Hmm? Isn't it a blessing to have hope? Huh? And not in the Pope? Hmm? Uh, you got that scope from the house of God. You draw strength from the brethren when you see that they have been strengthened by God. Brother James testified how God touched him. Miss Crystal was reminded how God touched her. How did that happen? God blessed him. He minded God, and she got a blessing. Hmm? How does that happen? It's called scope. It's called God orchestrating and doing something that gives us scope, aspirations, and hope, and faith in something out of this world. And the Lord. Aren't you glad we have a blessed hope? He's coming back after us. Hmm? Uh, and so therefore we can... Understand, we don't have to drive our tent stakes too deep in this world because we're going to the glory world yeah. where we'll literally feast at his table. Huh? I thought about this. In the fatness of God's house, there's scholarship. Hmm. Think of all you've learned in the house of God. Amen. Hmm. Some of you didn't even know how to pronounce some of the books of the Bible before you got saved. Now you know how to pronounce them and you know where they're located. Hmm? Amen. I know people couldn't even read before they got saved. Now they can read the Bible. God, God taught them how to read. The Holy Ghost taught them how to read and they can read the Bible. Think of all that you've learned. 
When I got saved, I just knew I was lost and I got saved. I didn't realize everything else. I, I, I'd always heard if you got saved, you got to go to heaven when you died. So I know I was saved, I know it's going to heaven. But I didn't understand I had a friend that sticked it closer than a brother. I didn't understand that. Hey, I didn't understand uh, 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 that he made a way of escape when temptation was befalling me. I didn't understand that. Uh, I didn't understand that I could cast all my cares on him for he cared for me. Uh, I didn't understand all that. I didn't understand uh, uh, in my father's house many branches. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I didn't understand all that. Uh, hey, I didn't understand uh, uh, the end times. I didn't know nothing about uh, tribulation period uh, and the millennial reign. Uh, I didn't know anything about the abode of God. Uh, I didn't know anything about the abyss and where Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years. Uh, I didn't know anything about the lake of fire. I'd heard about hell, but I didn't know about the lake of fire. Look at all you've learned uh, in the house of God. Uh, just coming and sitting under teaching, uh, sitting under preaching. Uh, realize God loves you more than you know what love is. Uh, realize that God esteems you highly. Uh, realize you are of a royal priesthood uh, a chosen generation uh, you're not of the rudiments of this world uh, hey the world looks at you like you're nothing uh, but God sees you as a joint heir uh, look at all that you've learned uh, at the house of God uh, the scholarship that we've learned all the things in the Bible now we haven't arrived you could have it all memorized and you still wouldn't know it all because half of it's not been told but just look at how much you have learned uh, devil beat you up tell you you don't know nothing and all of a sudden you get to think about what you have learned you know a whole lot more than you did before you got saved why because the house of God uh, part of the fatness of his house is the scholarship you know why it's important to learn so when somebody that's wicked tries to deceive you or lie to you, you know the difference. Mm. So when you're witnessing somebody, you can tell them that Jesus loves them and why Jesus loves them. Uh, what a blessing. I thought about this. I'm just talking about the fatness of the house of God. How about the saints? Uh, what a blessing we have in one another. That's a blessing. Uh, that we have the saints of God that we get to enjoy in this life and then spend all of eternity with. Hmm? I got to thinking about this. In the house of God, we're satisfied with, abundantly satisfied with the fatness. What about the fatness of when he just stupefies us? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you wasn't here Sunday before last, we saw a literal miracle. You say, well, I didn't see the Red Sea part. We saw something bigger than that. Come on. Amen. You say, well, I didn't see water turned into wine. We saw something bigger than that. Yeah. You say, well, uh, I didn't see 5,000 fed with a few loaves and few fishes. We saw something bigger than that. So I didn't see somebody touched with an issue of blood uh, made whole. We saw something bigger than that. You say, what happened? We saw a sinner yeah. who was headed to hell. Yeah. And God touched their heart and they got gloriously born again and now they're going to heaven God changed their heart saved their soul and made a new creature out of them and she hadn't quit uh, talking since have you listened? every service she's got to say something huh? I'm just letting her talk some of it don't make a whole lot of sense but that's alright I didn't make a whole lot of sense when I first got saved either huh? she just likes to talk she liked to talk before she got saved now she's got saved she really likes to talk well, she's always trying to put something in her perspective about the Lord. You know why? Because she got saved. Amen. Uh, that's a miracle. Uh, people go tromp on that Red Sea all the time. That ain't no big deal. But Natalie's not going to hell. That's a big deal. Uh, that's a big deal. Well, we got to witness that. I mean, I, I, I still hadn't got wrapped around all that he did that day all I know is when brother Clint got to praying there was a wave come over this place uh, uh, can I say that stupefied me that dumbfounded me that God would just choose to walk in here the way he did uh, and folks just started responding the way they did uh, 
You don't get that at the ball game. You don't get that at the Walmart. You don't get that down at the steakhouse. You get that at God's house. Uh, that's part of the fatness. Uh, and can I say, it's not always shouting time at the house of God. Sometimes it's a planting. Sometimes it's a watering. And sometimes God gives the increase. Sometimes it's, it's springtime and things are blossoming. Sometimes fall comes on and things start to die. And then there's sometimes winter time. You just got to tread through it till springtime. And sometimes the house of God, it isn't. You aren't swinging from the chandeliers, but you can still feast from God. Hmm? He's still good. But every now and then, he just rolls back the curtain and stupefies us to remind us not only is he still God, but he's still paying attention. Huh? I thought about this lastly. And it's answered right there in our text verse. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. The fatness of God's house brings satisfaction. What the governor and all these other governors and all these other politicians, when they said we were non-essential, what they do not understand that the house of God is the only place where our soul can be satisfied from God. You watch it on live stream, and yeah, you can enjoy it, but it still leaves a thirst. It still leaves a hunger. But when you come out and you experience Him, you leave out with a shout because you have been satisfied by the touch of the master. We can be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of God's house. I thank God for his house. Amen. I thank God. And I could have went for two hours on all God does around his house. But I'm glad he set aside a place. The Bible said Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. He set aside a place a called out assembly where we could come out from among the world. Sure. Think about it. God's house is the only place where you can get a, a welder, an artist, a DHL guy, a retired handyman, an office depot guy, a Navy guy that's a steel worker. I don't even know what Brian does. You can get an x ray man. You can get all these ladies that work in offices. All these folks that are nurses and doctors, and we all come from different walks of life. And God calls us all together where He's fitly framed us, where there are no big eyes or little U's, where there's no big education, no little education, where there's no big pocketbooks and no pocket. We all come together as one looking to Him. And He floods our souls and satisfies us. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Can I say this? You're not going to find that in just every place that calls themselves as a church. There are some churches won't satisfy. They leave you hungry. I've been in some left me mad. I'm thinking they just wasted my time. They wasted God's time. Tell me about Jesus. I don't want to hear about you, Joker. Tell me about Jesus. Tell me about the goodness of God. Huh? been to some and I might as well went to a rock concert listening to their music but there's a place where God has a candlestick where you can come out and be satisfied with the fatness of God so I encourage you to do this when you come to the house of God come to feast Come to taste of the fatness. Come to drink of the fountain of life. Come to get close to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come looking for Him. And when you come looking for Him, you will be abundantly satisfied with His fatness. Oh, what a Savior. Only Jesus can place us here and satisfy us with his fatness just think about this brother Brian if this is just the fatness 
wait till we get the whole load. Uh, 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 we're getting that part that Miss Marcy cuts off those to the dogs. That's what we're getting now. Wait till we get him. Let me ask you this question. Are you satisfied? Have you tasted? If not, I wouldn't leave here without him satisfying me. I'd be like Jacob. I'd grab a hold of him and wouldn't let go until he blessed me. And when he blessed you, hey, you might walk out different than you came in, but you'll never be the same. I wonder tonight, are you willing to taste and see that the Lord is good? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for that little thought you gave me. I enjoyed it, Lord, if nobody else did. I appreciate you for the abundance of the satisfaction of your fatness. Our Lord, bless now. Somebody might need some help tonight. I pray you'd help them. Might be somebody lost. I pray you'd save them. Might be somebody here tonight who just needs to get a little taste of how good you are. God, do work. Be with those that are hurting. God, get glory, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.